Hey everyone, welcome to Atomic Blender. I'm your host, Michael. The U.S. Department of Energy has awarded $22.1 million to 10 different nuclear reactor projects, ranging from molten salts to micro-reactor designs. It's part of a larger advanced nuclear technology development initiative that has awarded $230 million in the past to various projects for things like NuScale's small modular reactor and Kairos Power's high temperature salt reactor. It's also supported various regulatory reviews, helping smaller companies obtain licensing approvals, as well as hydrogen production and a whole bunch of other projects. Basically, it's been a catch-all funding program from the US government for a wide variety of advancements in nuclear technology, which honestly, it's great to see that kind of support Although this marks the end of the five-year program, so this will be the last round of funding that's released. And any extension or new program would require action from Congress or the President. But nonetheless, this final round of funding has some pretty interesting projects that I think are worthwhile going over. There are 10 projects in total, so I won't cover all of them. But the most interesting ones are GE's Carbon Neutral Fuel Aviation Project, which focuses on producing synthetic jet fuel using nuclear technology. 3M's isotope recovery for molten salt reactors, which aims to develop scalable and cost-effective material separation processes, which will be needed for several molten salt reactors. X Energy's micro-reactor, which focuses on maturing a transportable micro-reactor design. And General Atomic's new fuel types, which explores the development of fuel using silicon carbine for future advanced reactors. So as you can see, a pretty wide variety of topics in this last round of funding, which really speaks to the diversity of technologies that the US Department of Energy is willing to support. So let's dive in and see what we can expect from the first project, GE's Carbon Neutral Aviation Fuel. As we all know, the aviation industry has significant emissions and is always looking for ways to reduce its environmental impact. One way to achieve this is to transition to more sustainable fuels. This is where GE is oddly well positioned. They have a substantial aviation division that designs and manufactures aircraft engines, as well as a nuclear division for reactors and control systems. I don't know many companies that could claim such an overlap, but hey, here we are. GE's Carbon Neutral Aviation Fuel Project aims to use nuclear energy to produce synthetic jet fuel in an environmentally friendly and cost-effective way. The project seeks to tackle two significant challenges, producing sustainable aviation fuel at a competitive price and reducing the aviation industry's carbon footprint. The process of creating this synthetic fuel involves using high temperature steam from a nuclear reactor to generate hydrogen. This hydrogen is then combined with captured carbon dioxide to create synthetic hydrocarbon fuels. In simpler terms, the project aims to harness the heat from nuclear reactors to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Once the hydrogen is produced, it is combined with carbon dioxide, which can be captured from various sources, such as industrial emissions or directly from the atmosphere. By combining the hydrogen and carbon dioxide, a synthetic jet fuel can be created. This can then be burned without producing any additional carbon dioxide that would have otherwise been emitted. The key advantage of this project is producing the synthetic jet fuel, which GE says it can do at a competitive cost. It doesn't say what that cost will be, just that it will be competitive, so I guess we'll have to see. But if they succeed in making it economically viable, then it becomes much more attractive for the aviation industry, which could lead to more widespread adoption. Furthermore, this project could reduce the industry's overall emissions footprint, as the fuel produced is carbon neutral. In other words, the carbon emissions that are generated by combustion in the jet are offset by the carbon captured during the fuel production process, which is pretty cool. Next up is 3M's Isotope Recovery for Molten Salt Reactors project, which aims to develop separation processes for stable isotopes of lithium and chlorine. These isotopes, lithium-7 and chlorine-37, are essential for future and current reactor designs to operate efficiently. However, there is no production of chlorine-37 beyond very small gram quantities, and lithium-7 production relies solely on a single source of Russian supply. Notably, the Molten Chloride Fast Reactor, currently under development by Southern Company in collaboration with TerraPower and Idaho National Laboratory, will require metric tons of chlorine-37 in its fuel and molten salts for its demonstration reactor and any future commercial reactors. 3M aims to address these limitations by proposing three different production methods for lithium-7 and chlorine-37. Liquid-liquid extraction, isotachophoresis, I'm just going to call that one isotach, and microchannel distillation. If successful, these methods could revolutionize isotope separation, as their performance should be significantly better to conventional methods. 3M says it will develop the liquid-liquid extraction process in-house and partner with Pacific Northwest National Laboratories, or PNNL, for isotach and microchannel distillation technologies. The benefits of this project should be pretty straightforward. By developing a continuous, cost-effective, and clean process for producing lithium-7 and chlorine-37, 3M can help meet domestic demands for nuclear power 
while reducing reliance on foreign supplies. 3M says after the preliminary investigations, it will down-select between the three technologies depending on the scalability, unit cost, and upfront capital requirements of each. The selected technology will then be optimized in order to support the development and construction of a future pilot-scale operation facility. That's important because scalable production methods have the possibility to make nuclear power more accessible and viable. This in turn then could lead to an increased use of nuclear power as a clean energy source and work alongside other clean energy sources like wind and solar. The next project funded is the X-Energy Microreactor, an initiative looking to develop a transportable microreactor design that aims to maximize near-term manufacturability at a commercially cost-competitive price. The primary objective is to complete the preliminary design of the X-Energy Next Generation Integrated Transportable High Temperature Microreactor Plant, or Zenith. The plant features a 20 megawatt thermal high temperature heat source powered by TRISO fuel particles, which are made up of a uranium, carbon, and oxygen fuel kernel surrounded by three layers of carbon and ceramic-based materials that prevent the release of radioactive fission products. The concept has existed since the 1950s, but has received renewed interest for high-temperature reactors. X-Energy says the Zenith microreactor system will be versatile, with the capability to deliver power conversion systems that can be used to generate electricity, district heating, and high-temperature processes for heat in various industrial applications. The project also aims to accelerate the commercialization of transportable microreactors and establish a reliable supply chain. The potential benefits of a microreactor are substantial. By creating a compact and transportable nuclear power source, Zenith microreactors could be deployed individually or in bundles to provide clean, reliable energy in remote communities, mining operations, critical infrastructure deployments, disaster relief efforts, and maritime power applications. X-Energy also claims that the Zenith power system competes well against current and proposed power sources in terms of levelized cost of electricity, providing a sustainable and cost-competitive alternative to diesel power generators. Although, as with a lot of these proposed designs, it is difficult to accurately predict costs until there is experience in actually building and operating these things. Just saying. But if successful, the development and deployment of X-Energy's Zenith microreactor would probably have substantial impacts not just on the nuclear industry, but outside as well. Portable high-temperature gas-cooled reactors could establish advanced microreactors as a viable near-term option for zero-emission power and heat generation in a variety of applications, particularly for remote or on-demand needs. And last but not least, we have a project from General Atomics about tackling the challenges of getting new fuel types ready for advanced reactors, specifically for a later design called the Fast Modular Reactor. General Atomics is working on this new type of reactor under a separate Department of Energy program called the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program. The fast modular reactor uses a unique combination of fuel and a projective coating called cladding. While the fuel is very similar to the existing uranium dioxide, the cladding is silicon carbide, which is very resistant to high temperatures and radiation. This is a good choice for advanced reactors that need to run hotter and longer. But here's the catch. In order to get these new fuel types approved for use, they have to go through some pretty significant steps first. Developers need to gather a lot of information and pass specific tests to demonstrate that the fuel is safe and reliable. One of the main challenges is the time it takes to do those tests and the lack of facilities to do them in the US and worldwide. To address this issue, the Fast Modular Reactor Program has planned a series of tests on fuel rods in a special test facility called the Advanced Test Reactor, a nuclear reactor in Idaho that can perform these types of experiments and collect data. The project will also need to carry out additional tests in other reactors and analyze the results to make sure the fuel behaves as expected. And that's a lot of testing just to make sure that one new material will function properly. The project will also work closely with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. General Atomics hopes that this collaboration will ensure that the tests are accurate and thorough, or identify any additional steps that are required to make sure that the fuel is completely safe. Once completed, this could pave the way for a faster and more affordable way to get new fuel types approved for advanced reactors. In a nutshell, this project is a crucial step for making innovative reactor designs a reality, especially those that are not based on traditional water-cooled designs. So stay tuned for some exciting developments, eventually over the next several years. Research and development notoriously requires patience. And well, so does changes in the nuclear industry. But yeah, I think these projects show just how diverse and promising the future of nuclear energy can be. GE's Carbon Neutral Aviation Fuel Project, for example, is addressing something not just in the nuclear industry, but the aviation industry as well. And that's something that really could transform both. So thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. 
If you did, please like and subscribe to get more of this type of information. It also really helps out the channel tremendously, and I'll see you in the next one.